channel. So today we are going to be doing a cut crease, cut crease, and I do this because I myself am not good at cut creases yet. So um, I saw a video of some girl showing um, how easy it is, or not how easy, but an easy version of a cut crease, because you know nowadays cut creases can be super fancy and super cut. Um, I'm not there yet, I've tried them, um, even though everybody tells me they look good or they can tell it's a cut crease, to me it's not sufficient enough as to call it a cut crease, I just um, consider it like the way I'm, I don't know. So I'm going to show you guys, or I'm going to give you her at the girl that I follow on Instagram and she made it look, you know, kind of easy, so I thought take her steps into making a cut crease that um, is simple, but you guys will see right now. So. Her name is Dean Kate Makeup, so it's A I D E. I'll put it right here. So it's A Dean Kate Makeup. So, um, CJ just told me he's off an hour and thirty minutes earlier than he should be. Um, this is going to be a voiceover. I did a vote on if you don't follow me on Instagram or Snapchat. I did a vote on which video do you guys, which video type do you guys prefer first. So the options were between voiceover fast and easy and then talk through takes forever. This is not um, fast and easy. Let me just tell you guys right now. Okay, so anyways, if you wish to continue to see how I got this look here, um, keep on watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> So anyways, um, if you guys want to see how I got this look, go ahead and keep on watching. Okay, so here we are going to prep our face with, prep and prime our face with the NYX Angel Vel Primer. I like this primer because it makes my face feel really silky smooth, so I'm guessing that's why they call it Angel Vel. But um, I do use it on a lot of my clients too because sometimes when they have like a rough surface or dry skin, I like to moisturize and then put this primer over. And then now we're going to be going into our eyebrows. I realized that I never really did like a full legit eyebrow tutorial. So I thought that this time in this video, I would just start with my eyebrows instead of just starting with them on like I usually do. So pretty much um, I just fill it in with the dip brow pomade in dark brown. And the reason I fill them all in and not use just, you know, the product on the ends of my brows is because my brows are pretty um, bald. I've always had thin bald brows so I just fill them all in I like to have them really thick and solid and then I get the spoolie and I just um, even out and distribute the product that way it's like not just clumped on certain parts of the brow and that's how I get my natural look and the fade in the front by just blending it with the spoolie backwards so now we're just doing the typical clean and conceal. A lot of people do this for the brows nowadays because it does make them look cleaner even when you haven't plucked them you can always hide the hairs with concealer. Of course, they're not gonna look as clean, but still, um, it really helps to make your brows look more defined, even if you don't use a lot of product. You can always just use some concealer under or over to make your brows look cleaner. And then, so I've always been using the same concealer, same brow products for like two, three years now, Dip Brow Pomade and MAC Pro Concealer. This brush needs to go, this brush is done with and I had a new concealer brush by the time I made this video but I can't find it I'm hoping it's in my car so yeah right here we're just gonna blend 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 always blend downwards um I like to just distribute the concealer everywhere and then blend downwards and upwards that way it just kind of blends away from the brow and not just boxed around it so I just use my fingers I'll use a beauty blender I'll use that brush if it's working for me so Right here, I already had applied the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. We're going in with our Modern, Rena Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia. So to start off the cut crease right here, we are going to start blending in from one of our transition colors. Because you do need transition colors when you're creating a type of smoky eye or any eyeshadow look. You always want to have at least one or two transition colors before you add your main one at the top. But anywho, I go in with the shades Burnt Orange and Raw Sienna. And I just pretty much um, use my tapered cut um tapered blending brush because it is good to go into the crease and then i use my other morphe blending brush to just blend it throughout the crease and not be so harsh i myself struggle with just keeping the shades that i want in my crease so i've been practicing a lot to just keep the shades that i want in the crease and then not blend them too much 
outside of it and then have it on my lid and have it on my brow bone because you have to focus on where you really want the shades instead of just blending all over your eye and eventually all those colors will be all over so here I'm just going back and forth blending window swiping motions so that way I can be able to fully get that melted look of colors so here I went in with a more small and detail detailing eyeshadow brush and I went in with the color Cypress Umber so I first went in with just like a line type of um, motion and then I put in more shade more color so that way it gets a little bit darker and now I'm just blending it with the same tapered blending brush and then that is what's gonna give our cut crease the darkest color which is the one that is going to overall give the look so I do wish I would have went a little bit darker here because I did want it to be a little bit more um, cut not cut crease but a little bit more of a darker cut crease so I darkened it a little bit or I added the shades in the outer corner and then just blended it in towards the crease with red ochre and then um, those are always my go-to shades in this palette for some reason so now that I'm done with all the blending and all the shading, I go ahead and get my ColourPop concealer and that same concealer brush. And as you can tell, it is not the best brush to do this cut crease with, but this is what I had. So um, I just went ahead and made a mess, but I cleaned it up anyhow. And I watch a lot of videos on how to get like the perfect cut crease with the concealer and whatnot. And honestly, I have tried probably all of it like the half and then like you just tap some on the eyelid and open your eyelid so it gives you your natural crease but I just honestly draw it on so I just kind of go with like the angle of my eyelid and I just right here I'm trying to make the line more smoother but it kind of made a bigger mess <laughs> so if you guys do try to attempt this look or any cut crease with this method of beginners um, I would just honestly get a much cleaner newer concealer brush than what I have because it's honestly the concealer brush that you're going to use to define that's going to really help you when you're creating a cut crease. The reason I don't worry about making such a mess with the concealer brush when I'm doing the actual like cut of it is because I know that I can always go back in with some shadow and obviously shadow is going to overpower concealer and you just want to go in there very carefully and just cover it back up with the darkest shade and just blend it and don't get it so much on your concealer because then that beats the purpose of the cut crease. But yeah, so right here I went ahead and I am adding Pink Champagne from the Lorac Pro Palette. It's the most shimmery shade that I could find. In person it looks so much more like pearl looking and it's so much more pinker. And it's just so pretty. It's just a pretty shade. But in the video, in the camera, it doesn't really give it much um, detail and justice as how pretty the shade is. But yeah, so I went ahead and added just a shimmery shade on top of the actual concealer. And now I'm going to start with my wing liner. I have been using the NYC liquid liner um, I haven't been really doing much eyeliner lately I don't know if it's because I haven't been really you know inspired to do such looks with eyeliner even though I love a wing but for a cut crease I know that the last time I did one without liner I felt like it needed at least a little wing but here I went all out and I did a thick full-on wing and Pretty much um, from what I did, the only thing that mattered to me was that the line, the wing of the liner met up with the actual wing of the cut crease. So next step is going to be for me to just clean up the eyeliner with the same concealer that I used for my brows. And the reason I use this step is because I really, really always want to achieve that really sharp wing look whenever I'm doing liquid liner. So I use this extra step to kind of help me be satisfied with my, my wings, the way that they come out and as sharp as they can be. Um, I do recommend that if you're trying to start a wing liner, that the concealer and the tape method really do work 
so now the next step is going to be for me to just do my the rest of my face which is still pretty simple and still the same I've been using the LA girl cosmetics um, conceal foundation with this new brush that I got as a birthday gift and I haven't really been, been using my beauty blender or real technique sponge to apply my um, foundation lately because I honestly feel like um, even though they say that the product doesn't absorb in the sponge and blah 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 that you know it's it's pretty much not absorbing any of your product but lately I have been falling well I did fall in love with this brush because it's very short and stippled it's the Royal and Lanico complexion BMD 185 brush pretty much the BMD 185 the brand is Royal and um, yeah so I just pretty much apply it all around my face. Um, this does take this process does take a long time because it is a brush. So I take my time to just blending it out, and um, pretty much the product all stays on the brush. It doesn't go anywhere. So I still do go over with the beauty blender or a real technique sponge, and it is damped just to get the brush strokes out of the creases or on my face if I do live any, and it just gives it that more natural look. So now I'm doing my concealing and highlighting with my ColourPop, con ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Light 20. This concealer is really good and really affordable. Um, like most of ColourPop's products, they're all around $5, $6. I believe the concealer is only $6. And um, I wanted to try it out first before I went and bought more for like contouring. But I really do want to get a darker shade. It blends out nicely and... It does give really good coverage. It has lasted me a good amount of time. I got another one in another shade, but this one just fits me more for a natural look versus a super defined highlight and contour. Um, so yeah, I'm just blending it out, you know, the same as usual, down the bridge of my nose, whatnot. And um, the next I'm going to be setting it with my RC... Oh my god, I forgot the name. With my RCMA No Color Powder. And I use this powder, um, I'm actually almost halfway with it, but I do put it into a container just to better grab it with the Real Techniques Beauty Sponge and it is still damped, so I just press it onto my concealer, try my best to not get any wrinkles under my eyes in between the process. And then now I'm going to be going in with my Tarte, um, these really don't have names or numbers, but it's just the Tarte Fluffy Brush from the Unicorn Collection or the Make Believe make believing yourself collection and the reason I use this one is because like a more like a pom-pom and I just put the powder everywhere and I know it's gonna puff it on versus pressing it on and making me look super powdery so it's more like a feathery touch so I put it everywhere that I put foundation even on my neck make sure that you get every single spot because when you go in with your contour it's gonna make a difference the powder is going to either be patchy or smooth so now we're going in with the cheek parade palette and this is only like um, blushes and bronzers not really like highlights or anything so I went in with the Hoola and the Hoola light to get my contour I still do contour the same I haven't been doing liquid contour that much lately I've been wanting to get back on it but like I said I have to start all over so yeah I'm going in with my elf um, tapered um, blush brush I believe I've been using these brushes forever and they're only like a dollar you'd think I'd go buy you another one so yeah, now for the bottom lower lash line, I went in with the with the shade Sable from the Lorac Pro palette. And um, the reason that I use that shade versus the other shades that I use in the Modern Renaissance palette is because this shade is really dark and brown. So I really liked it. It was the closest that I wanted to try to smoke out my lower lash line. But um, I'm still not there yet where I'm getting too bold. But I do want to start adding more shadows and more creativity to the lower lash line because it just makes it look, look so much better. So here I'm just blending it with my blending brush after I applied it with the same small detailing brush. You just smoke it out. Um, even though it seems like it's going too low, you just keep smoking it out. You just want it to look very blended at the bottom lash line because it just makes a difference. So now I'm going to put highlight in my inner corner and the shade that I was using was the same shade that I used for the lid which was Champagne from the Lorac Pro Palette. And then now we're just going to put eyeliner in my waterline. Um, I just always feel like I need that even though some looks look way better without it. I always just do it. So yeah, now we're going to do our eyelashes, getting prepped for the falsies. And the falsies that I'm going to be using today are... 
gosh, I can't remember the name. I think they're the mink lashes from Vegas Nay Glamorous. I think that's the ones that they are. Um, yeah, so I'll confirm. No, they are. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah. So yeah. So when you're applying lashes, make sure when you're applying lashes, just make sure that you are putting them in the center first, and then you start sticking on the ends. Make sure they're closest to your lash line, and just keep, I keep pressing on them either with tweezers or my fingers. I just keep pressing on them until they feel like they're not gonna go anywhere. So I set the rest of my face um, ready for some highlight with the Marlboro Discu Rose Water, and of course I'm sticking to my Nicole Glow um, palette with Anastasia. It is has the best highlights in there for options. So I have already made a dent in the shades 143 and Glow Getter. 143 is more of a natural glow and Glow Getter is the one that I put on top for the more intense glow. So um, here I'm just putting it on the tip of my nose and at the bridge of my nose. I went a little too high up and put it in between my brows which I usually don't do that and it was just bothering me the whole time that I've been editing this video. But it's just the simple, you know, a little too much highlight. A little too crazy with the highlight. So, um, again, I go in with the feathery fluffy brush because it just makes everything go together like in like a big old blending of your face. So now we're going to start lining our lips. And this is my favorite lip combo. And I feel like it's going to be my favorite lip combo until I actually find another perfect lip combo that is with a nude. But lately, I have been trying to find the same satisfaction that I get out of these lip combos. And I couldn't, so I had to reorder Meaty from ColourPop for the third time. And I'm still using the Lip Liner Hover by MAC Cosmetics. And then topping it with Meaty ColourPop Ultra Matte Lipstick. And yeah so once i am done with this lip i am pretty much done with this look i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope i made it easy and i hope you guys understand that um i am a beginner with cut creases so with this video i am showing you guys that i will eventually keep practicing and just perfect a cut crease and you guys can be a part of it and be a part of my journey and hopefully you guys practice and if you guys want to try and get a cut crease too just follow the simple steps um, I know some of you guys will even look better than mine because I just for some reason cannot get the shades to stay like separate. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you guys on the next one. If you guys are wondering why I am wearing a nose ring now and I wasn't wearing it while I was filming, it's because it's a big one. Yay! I bought a, can you guys see? I bought a three pack off of Amazon and it came with a rose gold one, a gold one, and a black one, I believe. But the plan is that they're super cute and I've always wanted my nose pierced, but with the job that I have, um, it's not really allowed. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna get a box one because I just love nose rings. And even when I had my nose pierced, I was too much of a chicken to like be the one to put it in and keep it out and keep it, um, keep up with the maintenance. So um, yeah, just wanted to throw that in there.